Ladies and gentlemen, guys and girls, welcome to another wonderful episode of the Book of Sign and Podcast. As you can see, we're a little short staff uh, this, this uh, week. Uh, Jack, Richard, and uh, Kristen are all at the Cryptus uh, Festival in Tennessee. So you have me to entertain you. And alongside me is the wonderful Stephen Fields. And how are you doing today, my dear? I'm good, thank you. All right. So uh, to get the show started, uh, what, what are your books? Uh, what, you know, what, uh, can you give us an introduction to your books? Okay. Um, I have the first in the series called Willow's Wounds. Both are psychological and domestic thriller. Um, Willow's Flame is the first in the series. All right. This is it mm -hmm. right here. I've yes. also got mm -hmm. my poster in the background. <laughs> um, nice. So thank you. So this one is, uh, like I said, it's the first in the series. It's on the shorter side. So if you're wanting to, you know, uh, have like a palate cleanse in between um, some whatever type of books that you're reading or if you like shorter books or if you're on the go or whatever, that's mm -hmm. perfect. Um, and it's told from multiple point of views. Uh, Willow as oh, the main oh, character, nice. she nice. is a flawed character. Um, she makes a lot of poor decisions that has my readers like yelling, please, what are you doing? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> um, those are fun characters. Um, it's also told from the point of view of her husband and the point of view of her um, lover that's on the side. Like I said, she makes poor decisions. Um, and then the nosy neighbor, which everybody loves. She is a, a pill popper and um, old and kooky and she's very nosy. So she gives her mm -hmm. side. Um, so uh yeah this is uh like i said a psychological domestic thriller willow gets caught up in a love triangle and um she ends up going missing so from there on willow's telling her side of you know what's happening while she's a missing person and mm -hmm. um you got a chief you know looking for her and anyways um big plot twist people won't be expecting and um, it's been compared to the Netflix series called You uh, with that Joel Goldberg, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then Gone Girl. So both very uh, creepy stories with uh, psychopaths in them. And I love writing nice. from the point of view of a psychopath. So Ooh, both books have psychopaths in them. And uh -huh. then Willow's Crush is the second in the series. And uh -huh. I don't have that one. Um, I don't have a physical copy on me yet. Okay, no problem. Because, okay, so it'll be uh, published in four days on October 18th. Nice. Here is the cover to that. There you go. Nice. I like that. I like that. Thank awesome. you. So when you put both books together, it hey, makes Hey, that, that's uh, Billy Jean. Thank you for watching, Billy Jean Murphy. Thank you for watching. That's uh, one of our viewers. So somebody's awesome. watching it. All Yay. right, so yeah, we're, so we're not talking to ourselves here, so that's uh, that's a classic <laughs> for me, <laughs> but but yeah, I'm not sorry to cut you off. Go, please go on. No, that's okay. Uh, please do anytime someone comes in, we totally say hi to them. Oh, um, oh, okay, uh, yeah, so I, we, one, uh, one question I wanted to ask you we got we got a lot of people who like audio books. Is the series on audio, or do you plan to do audio for the series? Yes, so Willow's Flame already has audio on Amazon and an Audible, and then Willow's Crush will also have um, the same thing. Nice, nice, nice. So, uh, all right, so uh, you, you, you got my interest picked, so uh, I'm definitely going to check it out when I, when this uh, life is over. But I, I wanted to get into uh, how did you get into writing? What, what was your inspiration? Uh, what, when did this uh, all start for you? Writing wise, what you no, know, what what got you into the writing world? Okay, so um I always loved writing when I was in high school, I would write just poetry. Um, uh, but yeah. yeah, so that's it's kind of a cliche there, but um 
outside of high school, it was really like what drew what, yeah, what drew me into writing and, and publishing mm -hmm. um, or like looking for publishers and stuff is uh, my love for reading. And I always wanted to write a book and I thought, oh, I'll write a memoir one day, you know? Um, and, and then I, I ended up just writing com complete fiction. So, so mm -hmm. that's what really like drew me into writing, my love for reading. Oh, nice, awesome. Uh, before we move on, we have another, we have my uh, co-host for the, uh, for the weekend and that's Doc Fried, uh, welcome. The, the, this is uh, my thank you for joining us and so uh, so uh stephanie uh do you still write poetry i ask because i i try writing poetry i'm just not very good at it do you still write it once in a while or did you get off it no i i still do i actually um i self-published a children's book um that is all poetry uh well i mean it, i say poetry but it's a children's rhyming book so that's that's poetry you know but right. as far as you know what i'm really into um i wrote a pretty my, my, the book that i'm currently working on is all based off of a poem that i wrote mm. okay yeah, so, 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 so so what kind of poetry do you write if you don't want me asking uh dark poetry uh uplifting poetry or is it some kind of a mix because i know it's, it's, definitely, kind of dark. Poetry. it's dark. definitely dark okay. that's definitely dark yeah <laughs> those, those are the ones that tend to get me the most i do like poetry i just can't write it but i do enjoy reading it so you know that's why i ask i do enjoy reading dark poetry here and there so you know you got you definitely got my interest picked there so mm -hmm. so so uh so what, what what are your future plans? What do you plan to write for the future? You know, what what do you have uh, planned uh, after this series? Um, so after the series, I do want to um, really focus on my current work in progress. It's called I Am Rotten. It's actually based off of that, uh, the poem that I was telling you about. Um, okay. So I, I really want to finish that um, because I've, gotten so much done with it. I don't want to let it go and start on something new just yet. So, but I want to continue writing psychological and domestic thrillers. Ah, yes. Okay. So, 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 you, so you're more, you're more into the psych psychological horror aspect, correct? Yes. All right. Nice. All right. So, so basically it's one of those kind of uh, books that will be more like a lifetime film, if I'm correct. Like a one of those lifetime movies. It's 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 one of those stories. It's like it's like a story that's like a lifetime movie. You know, like those movies you see on lifetime. I love that you said that because I was literally just uh talking to my husband the other day about how it's it's kind of like a lifetime movie, except for I mean, yeah, it's, it's a guilty <laughs> it's actually a guilty pleasure of mine once once in a while. I it's actually a guilty pleasure of mine. I I, I hate to admit it, but I I do enjoy this movie sometimes. I <laughs> seriously. So, I mean, I, I, I see it. Doc Mathing like, you know, man, this is something you, this is something new you know about me. And that's how I like about doing these shows. You, you know, you're, not, you're never too old to learn anything. So, there you go. That's my guilty pressure. So, you know, now, now I'm definitely funny. interested. I'm definitely interested now. So, uh, yeah, but, definitely. So, there's, a, there's a stalker in there, I just like a lot of lifetime movies. <laughs> oh, go, go ahead, Doc. What you wanted to say? Yeah, I was going to say, I actually prefer the Hallmark Mysteries. You know, I, I prefer theirs. They always have happy endings eventually. <laughs> All right, okay. If yeah, I, no problem. I'm gonna read, uh, I mean, if I'm going to watch something, I want it way far out of the spectrum of what we normally see with zombies and horror films and stuff like that, where the endings aren't usually very happy. I mean, they might be temporarily happy that day, but mm -hmm. you know that the next day, you know, the bad guys are going to be there or the zombies are going to be there. Or, you know, any piece you have is very temporary. And at least any with the Hallmark Mystery at, at the end, right. you know, they're, they, they're happy for, allegedly, forevermore. So, who knows? <laughs> all right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, definitely, we all have different... Uh, flavors we all like different things that, and, and that's the cool thing about uh 
about writing, about books in general, that it, there's no one book for everyone. Everybody makes their own different thing. And I think that's what makes this uh, community so great. So, uh, so, so, so Stephanie, do, do, so, uh, if, if you had to write in another genre, would you? And if you would, what genre would it be if you had to write in another genre? Uh, <laughs> Tough one, I know. I probably, Tough one. Uh, paranormal. Like, I mean, paranormal. I that's not a genre. I mean, I, I don't really know if you would call that a genre, but I would like add that into. Well, I guess I've already kind of done that. Um, not, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't really see myself writing in anything that's not psychological or domestic or thriller, you know? So, I, I mean, I can't really see myself writing in like just pure romance or like a comedy. Um, <laughs> you <know>? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah you, 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 you're almost like me. I mean, you I, I, never know you when like, you might be able to come up with something pretty com comedic. I have actually. There's some. Uh, there, there's some funny uh, parts in Willow's Flame, and even more funny parts in Willow's Crush. Even though Willow's Crush is darker um, and more of a psychological thriller than Willow's Flame, I would say, anyways. But um, uh, I'll just I'll leave that up to the readers. But yeah, I mean, there's there's uh, there's some. There's some pretty funny parts in, in Willow's Crush that I, I kind of surprised myself with that. I was like, hey, that's actually like more on the comical side. And, you know, which I kind of I wanted to bring a little bit of light into both of them. So it's not just so dark all the time. That's why there's Pauline, the nosy neighbor in Willow's Flame, because mm -hmm. she brings the uh, she's comical. She brings comedy into it. Um, but yeah, so I, I surprised myself with some funnier parts in Willow's Crush. Oh, but nice. I, I felt just writing a full on comedy or yeah, like like a whole book of it. Yeah, you might. Yeah, you might me. You know, it, it, it's hard for me to come up with. I mean, I, I may, maybe it's because of the way we move, the uh, way my fish treated us. Uh, for me, yeah. you know, as you may well, uh, you, you don't know, I suffer from PTSD, so I kind of had a pretty dark life. Uh, a hurricane hit our uh, hit in Puerto Rico about six years ago, and you know, I can't get rid of those memories. So I, my, my, my fiction tends to be much more darker than uh, other fiction, you know, and that's why I'm comfortable writing it. And I, it's funny, a lot of people tell me I should I should stop writing dark fiction because, but I can't help it. That's just, I'm, I'm comfortable writing it. That's just what I write. That's why I enjoy reading and writing. So, I mean, I, I, so, so sometimes, like they say, sometimes what we write is a reflection of, of what I might say, oh, if that makes sense. It does. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I have a lot mm -hmm. of um, PTSD from things that I've suffered from as well that I won't get into, but right, okay. um, yeah. it's helped me to write, um, you know, dark. Actually, <laughs> my dedication page for Willow's Crush is I dedicate this book to my mom, dad, okay. and Estes. Without the trauma you gave me, none of this would be possible. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I like that. That's, that's really clever. <laughs> Thank Why you. Don't? What did your parents do right. about that? They're both passed away. So, um, oh, they, they I, I don't say. So, all right, but, that's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my dad would probably laugh. My mom would probably roll her eyes and be like, Ugh. Great. Now everybody's gonna think I'm horrible, and I'm like, oh no, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. Um, but I do have. Um, I, I'm not gonna say they're horrible. They're, they're, but there's a lot of trauma there. Um, but yeah, I do have like what I call my Earth parents. Um, so shout out to them if they end up watching this. I don't want them to think I'm not that I'm just just excluding them. Um, but but I, I yeah, I wanted to make my dedication page funny and bring up my trauma in it. So. Just to you know, make people relate more and laugh a little bit. Yeah. So so not so not th this really flows into my next question really well. Do you see writing as therapeutic as therapy to get to vent your feelings? You know, do you see it as therapy? I do. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Same here. You know, because I know many writers as uh, you know. I, I know I have a lot of writer friends that go for dark moments that that their mice aren't very good or very perfect, and they use 
waning as that would be just to make themselves feel better. So, you know, so, so you know, it's not unusual at all to find out why it's in that same train of thought, as they say. So uh, now moving on to your covers. I mean, I like your covers. Uh, who who does the covers for you? Um, so I actually um, get both Willow's Flame and Willow's Crush are published through Pennant Publications, and they have okay. a whole team of editors and formatters and uh, cover designers, and their cover designer um, designed Willow's Flame and Willow's Crush design. But I do want to take credit for some of it, not the actual putting it into action because she really turned this like alive for me and made it just so beautiful. Um, nice. But I did tell her exactly what it is that I wanted, like to a T, like down to the way that the eyes are, the eyebrow, like everything. Like I want fire around the face. I want, you know, um, the faces to complete whenever they come together. Um, but I, I could not have done what she did. All I can do is just say, you know, this is what I'm envisioning. This is what I want. And then she really put it into action and made it look phenomenal. So I'm literally obsessed with the book covers. I'm so excited about them. Yeah. I, yeah, they did one of the books. Uh, so pendant publications, that's a traditional publisher, correct? Yes. Nice. Yeah, I've, I've heard of them, so you know, I was thinking, so I, I was thinking about maybe I'm, cause I'm, a, I'm indie published, so I was thinking about maybe doing a traditional, maybe maybe being a hybrid author. Oh, speak. So speaking of that, do, do you do, do you uh, do you plan to be a go indie one day with a uh, with, with your next series, or do you or do you plan to stay with traditional? Anything that involves the Willow's Wound series, I'll definitely go through Pennant Publications. Okay. Um, I did self publish three short stories on Amazon and then that children's book. And, um, I had a really hard time with like formatting on the children's published, uh, the children's, um, book with the illustrations. And it was a, a massive headache and I ended up crying. I'm not going to lie. Um, but and then the three yeah. shorter, you know, those were a little easier to format because there's no pictures. Um, but also they're, they're shorter, you know, one of them's a 30 page or like 27 page book, you know, short story. And the other ones, you know, or one of them's just four pages long and one of them's just like six or seven pages long. I can't remember. So those were fairly easy and nothing I would just, you know, try to ask anybody to do. But um, I would like to, I, I mean, I thought about it just to see what would happen to go indie with a novel. Yeah, I mean it's 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 tough because as an indie publisher, you have to do everything. You gotta do the the covers, the formatting, as you said, the marketing, all of that. You know, I, I yeah, the marketing for me will probably be the hardest thing. I, I, I'm sure as an indie, it's the hardest thing to do as an indie author. I absolutely agree. I'm sure Pennant they they help you a little bit with the marketing stuff. So you know, I so with with that being said, uh, do you? Do you do conventions or do you go to a lot of uh, uh, cons nearby? Yeah, remote? so I do a lot of marketing um, and I'm trying to, you know, figure that out more. I have a, a difficult time with TikTok, even though like people are like, oh, you have a lot of followers because it's like 7,300, probably less now, um, which I, I don't get a lot of views on my TikToks, and I find it really hard because I have a lot of like social anxiety, which I'm not in front of people, but I am at the same time. It, it's anyways, but yeah, so apparently that's like the way to go for, for authors to get pretty big um, when they're self marketing, mm -hmm. you know, or uh, self publishing. And, um, but I do go to author conventions. And like I said, I do a lot of marketing. Pennant does do marketing as well, but not like the way like but it's a, a small publishing company okay. um so but they do like pay for like your book cover your editing your format everything um and and they also do marketing as well i don't know all that they do with marketing because some of the stuff like i'm left in the dark about it you know yeah that, that, um, yeah that, but that, that's usually the case with traditional publishing anyway any publisher you go with 
they're gonna they're never yeah. they're never gonna give you hard numbers or anything like that. And you know, they yeah, they always kind of keep that secret from you. So yeah. So so what, what what was the NAS convention you did? You went to? What was the NAS one you did? Um, the last one I went to was at the uh, Greenville, Texas Public Library. Okay. Um, yeah, it was a. I mean, it was a an author event because there were like thirty four authors there, um, and then of course I think you know I went to the um, Texas Author Con as well. Uh, but yeah, that and th those were both like the the one that I went to at the Greenville Texas Library at the Greenville Sec Texas Library was literally the next weekend after Texas Author Con. Mm -hmm. So, and I actually saw some of the authors that I saw at the Texas Author Con there at the Greenville Texas Library Author Convention. So that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so it, it's been a little bit, um, and I would like to look at more author conventions to go to as well because they're pretty fun. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. All right. Uh, have you have you heard of the group Twenty Books to Fifty K? Have you heard of that Facebook group? I haven't. You need to join. I, it, it's a pretty good group for us authors, indie or traditional. Uh, Twenty Books to Fifty K. It's a you know you could you could find out a good resources and a lot of people showing their stories and you know it, 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 it's it's a good and it's, it's some uh, things you can read up to improve your marketing. You know, just it's just. I mean, as mostly as and you know, when they charge you, and uh, the the guy who runs the group, he's got some books out about marketing and about publishing. If you ever go to the the, the indie roots, so really good group to look into. You know, it's called Twenty Books to Fifty K, and it's a Facebook page. It's a Facebook group, yes. Okay, got yeah. it. So I one, the, it's, it's a really, I mean, I I don't post there any. I I just look. I just look around. You know, look up the stories, and you know, they, and they say BookBub is one of the biggest, biggest ways to promote your book is BookBub, but it's really hard to get into. You know, yeah, I, have, um, I, have, I, have, I between me and you, I've sold over another thousand copies of my books and never got a BookBub promotion. So, you know, <laughs> I, I, you I'm actually like, didn't get one. What was that? You sold how many and didn't get a book promotion? Uh, I sold eleven thousand copies in my lifetime. Uh, six years, I never got a book bub promotion. So, oh wow! Yeah, I, but but there are other newsletter promotions you could use, like uh, Bargain Booksy, Robin Weeds, e, e new I mean, yeah. I mean, if you can you it, tell me those again, I'm writing them down. <laughs> I, I I'll tell you what. Uh, if you if you find me on Facebook, uh, what on your Facebook, like Stephanie Fields. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you a phone request and I'll message you instead. I'll send okay. you a message. Yeah, because there's plenty of them. But the but the but the thing about newsletter promotions that not not all of them are good. I gotta tell you, some of them are pretty a bust. I I spent over a thousand dollars or more just on newsletter promotions just to see which ones are good and which ones are crap. So I'm so the ones I will message you are, are good. You know, they're good for they work for me. But then, of course, yeah, you have to understand some of them work for certain genres, and others are just not going to work for your genre, the genre base as well. So, yeah, I mean, but but yeah, but but twenty books to fifty k is a really good group. I could advocate for them, you know. You it, it, and I mean, you don't have to post. You just you know look at the post, and this uh, and if you go to uh, let me see if I could pull, pull up the uh, group here for a moment. Yeah, I was going to also say I. Uh oh, oh you just got out. I know there's like 12 sites I check every day. Just oh man, she's cutting yeah, out. She's, Can you yeah, hear her? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, she's breaking up, unfortunately. I think what she's trying to say is that, books she, are on she, it. yeah, she does about, she, yeah, she checks about 12 different sites for books, for bargain books. So that, that, that could be a good way to uh, boost up your, your, uh, you know, your ranking and all that. Yeah, she's just having a little trouble over there, unfortunately. That happens sometimes. But yeah, but so I'm looking at the group. Uh, I mean, if you go, if you it, once you join a group and, and you look under files, you know, it, it, there's plenty of good stuff to look. Uh, there's plenty of good stuff to look into, and it's all free. You know, it, it, you don't have to pay. So you you just look at them videos resources you could check out so 
yeah, all that all that good stuff that you can check out. Nice. So, I'm looking yeah. forward to to yeah. um, getting mm -hmm. the the websites you're talking about. Yeah, man, we're in a good group. Uh, uh, so so speaking of, of of being traditionally published, uh, w w would you want to try to uh, become traditionally published through uh, an agent? You know, like the old fashioned way, like you used to have to do it. You know, like to get into the big the big four publishers. I think that would be amazing. Um, so yeah, essentially, like that would be a, a really amazing thing to to be able to get to, you know, one of the big four publishers. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we all kind of dream of yeah, that. You know? Yeah, but I think the trick is though is that not every book is as good for traditional publishing. They can't promote certain books. But but certain books do really good on uh, the indie publishing platforms. You know they do good on it. You know as when, when they independently publish, they do really good. They're just not yeah. good. So that's that's just another thing. I mean I'm not an expert on traditional publishing, so I can't give you too much information about that. Yeah, you know, my background is mostly indie publishing. So uh, Doc, what what you want what you want to say before you got cut off? <laughs> Yeah, um, I was gonna say I know I check about ten sites every day just to see what's out there and see what's coming up. And sometimes I'm surprised at the authors that I see on the list. So um, I will send you a list as well, Stephanie. Um, Thank you. Because yeah. some of these, some of them are pretty good. But again, as Angel pointed out, it really depends on the genre and what they want to specialize in that day. I've noticed with BookBub, they'll have certain days and suddenly there'll be eight or 10 that are sort of post-apocalyptic or um, that are all on the same day. And then a couple of weeks later, it'll be all fantasies in the sort of genre that, that our group is, your group is sort of writing in, you know, and I'm editing. So they, they tend to do that, but it's not frequently with BookBub. Um, some of the others, uh, free booksy and stuff like that will suddenly, they'll do, they'll do it like once every week or so, or once every other week, suddenly there'll be seven or eight that, that are relatable. Um, so, you know, it's, for me, it's a great way to pick up free books and let, let me see how well they're writing or not writing because, you know, my niche is, of course is editing. That's, you know, and, yes. and, and, and advising you what direction to take it in to build it up. Okay, you're short a whole heap. You know, let's take this scene out and let's make it its own chapter by doing this and that. I mean, that's what I do, basically. Um, yeah. I don't pretend to be the author. You guys are the brilliant ones that come up with all the ideas. I'm just the one that puts it together so it's readable and, and right. mm -hmm. you know, and, and makes sense as you go along as opposed to it being... Uh, what did they just throw out there and why, you know, and the tangents that people tend to leave that nobody, you know, it bothers people's like people like me. It's like, why do you even start that? You took it nowhere. You know, let's, mm -hmm. let's make it a complete idea. And, and even if you want to develop it later on, it's its own separate book. That's fine, but let's make it enough of an idea that it's, it's there for a reason, as opposed to you just threw out a thousand words. That means nothing. <laughs> What a waste. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, Stephanie, uh, not that we got all of that. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, send me a fun request when you can. Uh, it's Angel Ramon. Just send me a fun request. Oh, I'll try to I'll try to find you. Uh, so, I'll try to find you when I – now, I wanted to ask you, what is a normal day for you, writing-wise? What is your normal routine? Do you have a routine when you're writing? What is it? I am actually not the greatest at routines. <laughs> so I don't have to be like, I'm waking up in the morning okay. and I'm writing a, you know, a thousand words along with my morning coffee. You know, like that's not me. I don't have a set schedule. I wish that I had a set schedule, but I don't. Um, or I wish that I could be one of those people who like, can just sit down and be like, okay, every day I'm writing at this time and uh, this much. Oh, I just got your friend request. Thank you so much. Yeah, so, oh. so, to, yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely going to be sending you all all those links, and Doc will be sending you links as well. So, you, so they, they, some of them might be similar. So, but yeah, I'll be sending you that so you can uh, check those out. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I think we might, uh, Stephanie, I think we, I think we might have lost you there. Yeah, she's frozen. She's frozen. Yeah, Bob, yeah, we lost her. And I can see she's frozen, which is heaps better than on the last one. You and Sorry, Stephanie. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> We can hear you. Yay. I went to confirm um, your friend request and I thought it would be easy to just like click confirm because I didn't click on Facebook or anything and then just exited everything. And so anyways, yeah, no, I yeah I'll leave anything else alone that's on my phone while I'm in here. But yeah, yeah. so I, my <laughs> thing is just like, if it's like three o'clock in the morning and something comes to me um or i just like have like creativity i'll get up and write then so really I, I don't really have a routine or if i'm like okay i'm i'm in the middle of doing whatever i'm doing i'm out somewhere whatever and an idea comes to me then i'll open up like my notepad on my phone and write it in there real quick so that i can go back to it later you know at home so yeah it's it's, it's not really like a, i don't have a, i don't really have a routine kind of all over the place Kind of all over the place, y'all. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, so, uh, so uh, besides writing, uh, what are your hobbies? What, what do you what what do you like to do outside of uh, writing? When you're not writing, what are some things you really like to do? Um, so I love reading, uh, okay. photography. Yep. So uh, I'll find like random things, uh, spider webs or whatever, you know, like outside, I'm not really big on taking pictures of, I used to do photography. Um, so I, I will, I, what I'll do is I, you know, like to take pictures of random things out, outside, um, and inside, but not necessarily people like I used to take pictures of, unless if it's a candid moment, um, uh -huh. But uh, yeah, so read photography, um, kind of a nerd. And I like to stay up to date on like current events in the world. So I'll go search for those, even if they're not showing up um, in front of my face. Um, it, I'm not too sure if you can call that a hobby, but I get really into it. Um, I like to watch, <coughs> excuse me. I like That's to watch thrillers psychological and domestic thrillers um spend time with my family and i'm not really i'm kind of a homebody so you're kind a of a little anti-social and kind of a homebody so yeah, i like I to stay at home a lot and yeah, i don't feel bad about that i i, I think most of us are most of us why is anti-social most of us i i included you know i don't like it I'm not a big, I'm not big on getting out at night like I used to. Now, 10 years ago, if you met me, I was the biggest night guy. I used to go out a whole lot of times at night to the bars, nightclubs. You may get into trouble. Just not now anymore. At the age of 33, I kind of said, nope, uh, I'm, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to live. I might this hermit in life. So, yeah, no shame in that. Mm -hmm. That's the way I used to be, super social, um, even yeah. though I was still like a little bit antisocial uh but in my younger days for sure i was more like let's go do this let's go do that let's go do this and now i'm just like oh i gotta do that i gotta do no i want to stay home yeah, right. exactly <laughs> like oh i gotta go out like oh no okay uh, uh, what time are we gonna be home and all that yeah. <laughs> I, I i know it, it it makes me sound like an old man but yeah i i i fired i fired it but i mean for me my routine is I get up at seven in the morning or even six in the morning sometimes. You know, I play I play Sonatel on a, on a, on my on a Microsoft Sonatel and all that just to get my just to get my brain going. Then I have breakfast, you know, you know, and then and then and then whatever my parents need me, I do I do I take care of my parents, they're elderly, so I take care of them full time. Uh, and then after that, around nine o'clock, I start writing. I just for nine to around one in the afternoon, I'm just on the computer typing and mark, you know, doing whatever and get and getting that. And then I because I, I might have the afternoon to myself just to rest, or if my parents need need me to go anywhere, or we gotta go somewhere, I might to go after. So that's basically my routine. Yeah, and then at nighttime, I just I just sit back and watch sports. I'm I'm a big sports fan. I'm like football. Baseball, basketball, you know, I'm a big sports freak. So, yeah, that's my routine. So. Nice. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I used to be, I, I, it used to be a whole lot different when I was younger, that's for sure, but not, um, not anymore. Well, but I think that's so, with everybody. The older you get, the right. less, mm -hmm. you know, I work long and hard because I usually work an eight to 14 hour day and I come home and it's like the idea of going to, even going out to dinner or going to a bar. I mean, if it's not something I can pick up on the way home, I'm just eating a salad or you know, having soup or something at home, I'm not doing anything. I, I, I value yeah. it. Um, yeah. Plus it gives me a chance to come home and read or come home and watch the telly. And, uh, and of course, October is a great month to come home and watch the telly because they're horror movies all month long. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> this is my favorite month of the year. I mean, Yes. Yesterday, I think I watched four horror movies, and none of them were any good. But I watched oh. <laughs> a couple of them were, uh -oh. were yeah, Amazon sucks. and freebies, and the others were on the air. But it was like they were so bad; they were just fun to watch. Like was it Zombies on the Plane? It was like okay, that was a very interesting. I think Snakes on the Plane, but you've got zombies instead, <laughs> and it worked. It really worked. Oh, yeah. you know, the ending was predictable, but hey, it worked. <laughs> Should we ask you what you're drinking, Stephanie? Is it anything oh, good? Yeah. I pre pretend it's something really good. Okay. This is, is, is a, a mocha, loca. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is sweet tea, y'all. <laughs> I just wanted to put it in a cute cup. It's a, it's gray cup, but you should. I mean, I like the, the color, cup. The color looks sort of red. You could have said, "Oh, it's a blood dilution." You know, I do this. <laughs> a bloody belly. Skin, you know, it really helps my skin stay moisturized. Yeah, you know, yeah, kind of like come up with something creative, like, "Oh, I need this as my source of energy." You know yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that is actually uh, human blood. Um, and I, I do get for energy. energy. <laughs> no judgment here. Through the ages, many famous people believed in drinking blood to, you know, <laughs> yeah, their, right. either their beauty or their powers or, you know, it me young. Enemy. And I, hey, it works. Maybe to get your creative juices flowing. Yeah, right. Know, think mm. really sick things. It's, <laughs> even if it's, you don't have to yep. tell whose blood it is. It could be. Right. <laughs> It could be goat blood. It could be, uh, yeah. And Stephanie, welcome to the book assignment. This is the real book assignment when we talk about some of the weird stuff in the world. And, and, you're, and you're getting it, and you're getting it mild because it's only me and Doc. I'm at, at Jack, Jack and the was on here to uh, make it more. Mind you, I, I'm the straight guy when they're all sitting here drunk as skunks, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, guys, I gotta go work later. I've got to stay sober. I can't sit here and drink. Um, but I'm the straight guy in all these, and they get weird. So you've hit a really good day. Angel's lovely. I mean, he's just so nice about everything, and he's not sitting there drinking nonstop like Jack usually is, or yeah. <laughs> Some of the yeah, you, you got the good one today, Stephanie. But I thought, but well, we got to get you back on the show with all the others because you we really need to experience the absolute weirdness that we go through. Just, <laughs> all, all, I, all you can just all you can just read we read, read one of my books and you see my my weird side really pop out. That's why I really get <laughs> damn weird. True. Yeah, I, mean, I got the most uh, amazing things with bacon. Yes, with that's rat. my exception. And rats I got a <laughs> rats too. Yes, correct. Uh, uh, so Stephanie, uh, we're gonna get a little weird here. So forgive me, but do you have any obsession? Is this is there one particular thing you're obsessed with that you you just enjoy so much that you can't stop thinking about, stop doing? <laughs> Told you it's gonna get a little weird. Hmm. Mm -hmm. ah, I got a stumped. There you go. Yeah. Um, I mean, here lately, it's it's been reading and writing. Um, okay. But I go through like different. Yeah, because um, 
because I I realized that Willow's crush and y'all are gonna be like, this is y'all, you're crazy. You're literally crazy. Um, but I, I realized that Willow's crush is gonna be published in four days. But mm -hmm. that has not stopped me from going into it and adding more right up to <laughs> like and I've been like obsessed with it and rereading it and just like not even just like fixing it to be like, okay, making it perfect, but literally like I changed the ending just a few days ago. <laughs> like that's ridiculous. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah I, I'm the kind of writer. I got the ending. I'm happy with it. I don't want to touch it, but I mean, maybe, I mean, one on one occasion I did change the ending to one book, but you know, other than that, so other than that, I'm really happy with the endings I come up with. But I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, I, it's, it's all it's all about the joy of writing. As long as you feel joy in doing it, there's nothing wrong with it. And and sometimes the, the ending you come up with is better than the one you had before. You know, you, you think of exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, the yeah. other thing is is sometimes actually displaying the alternative endings can make it really ah. interesting for the reader because, well, for example, tonight. Um, it, if any of these listeners are in the Chicago area, there's some somebody called Sven Gulli who's been on the air for 40 plus years and he shows B great horror films. And he's doing the original Invaders from Mars. And what most people tonight is one of the two that he's showing. And and people don't realize that there were actually two alternative endings that were fairly different in this movie there was one for the uk release and one for the yank release in the states and they're not the same at all and if you have the opportunity to see both i actually i actually like the uk version of the film better because there's actually additional parts that they've added in um so it actually runs i think about 10 or 12 minutes longer uh, but it's it's like watching a different movie and yet it's the same movie all the way across until you get to the end and it's more. Def it's a more definitive. I won't spoil it for anyone who's now going to look at Sven Gulli on Me TV tonight. And it's the second show. Um, will be um, the UK version's more definitive than the US version. But um, Angel probably knows. Every Saturday, I post the Sven Gulli. Yes. What's on Sven Gulli? And he sort of people are like, "What the heck is this?" And it's a Me TV <laughs> on on Saturday nights. Um, yes. And you know today and pointed out there are two endings and I'm not sure which ending we're actually going to see because I can't Ooh. tell from the runtime. I'm guessing it's the U S one uh, because of airtime for Singuli to do all his skits and everything around yeah. it, he hosts it. Uh, but mm -hmm. if that UK one is really interesting. So, you know, I love alternatives. It's like, wait a minute maybe that wasn't the real ending. Maybe this, and they're not necessarily both happy and one's happy and one's sad or something like that. They're just different. Mm -hmm. endings. Yeah. And it can yeah. really make an angel sitting here thinking like, how can I do an alternative ending on this book I'm writing? I can see your brain. <laughs> um, but sometimes mm -hmm. that's really exciting to the reader because they get to see something else. And, and suddenly you realize, Hey, you know, I really liked, I personally liked the first ending better, but my readers seem to really like the second. So for my next novel, I'm going to go based on what the second ending was as opposed to the first. Mm -hmm. And it can be a really interesting, you know, springboard to, to creativity right. and mm -hmm. to, you know, all the writers, all, all the additional stories that fans come up with and stuff like that. You know, you sort of get, what is it? The, 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 the team werewolf and the team vampire. What was it from, from that series that I never, I really didn't see. Um, uh, where the, the girl fell in love with two different, she had two different guys. Twilight, right? That's it. Twilight. I, yeah, okay. it was, it was after my <laughs> time frame. So it was sort of like, all right, well, whatever. It's, it's sort of like Harry Potter. Like it, it's heaps after my time frame. So I only catch parts of it, but you know, it's one of those interesting things that can be developed and could actually create a few extra books in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or you can actually do something in the ending. So right, where you can have both endings. You could have, one, you can have the, the original ending, and then after that, you have the uh, the alternative ending in the back of the book. And that could be something you could, you could think about doing. Huh? 
I might, I might actually like the idea. Absolutely, you know. And see, I didn't even charge you for it, Angel. Freebie right there. <laughs> the, the and, that's why I like about the, and that's why we do the show. Because, yeah. my, my, and like I said to you, Stephanie, you're never too old to learn anything. And there you go. <laughs> well, the other right. thing is, you can develop an entire ending. Uh -huh. and, and I've, because I've also worked on movie scripts, and we had an entire oh, ending for the movie. And we turned it into a, a the, the ending into a dream, and the reality was very different when they actually showed the ending. So Ooh, we spent like 20 minutes working, you know, filming and everything, this whole ending, and everyone's like, okay, that great movie, and then they wake up. And you mm -hmm. do reality in five or ten minutes, and people are like, wait a minute, whoa, wait. wait. That was a that was a dr dream and, and what the hell? <laughs> oh, which one is really the dream? And with one of them, we left it very elusive as to which one was the yeah. dream and which was the reality, or were they both dreams? Particularly, yeah, I want to write a book like that. I want to write a book like that where the whole thing is uh, basically either a dream or. Um, a book or th that somebody's reading or a movie that somebody's watching. And then at the end it's, it's revealed that that's Go all get, it is. Get a copy of the 53 invaders from Mars. That's airing oh, tonight okay. on ETV. And it doesn't matter which version it is. Get a, if it's us version though, get it and watch it. And it's like, Oh, what? And, mm -hmm. and it's that sort of thing where a lot of it, you don't really know what was dreams and what wasn't dreams. And it's, it can be heaps of fun to, to work with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. All right. So Stephanie, our uh, next question for you, do you see yourself as a plotter or a pantser? Do you like to plot or do you just type uh, whatever comes out of your brain? I'm a typer. I just type whatever comes out, just whatever comes up. So, so you no outline at all? I don't. <laughs> I literally just start typing. I mean, I'll obviously go back and, you know, read and, you know, but and, and change things up and stuff like that. Or like I'll, you know, like an idea comes to my mind. Like I said, I'll type it up in my like notepad thing on my phone. Mm -hmm. And um, add little ideas here and there, mm -hmm. um, and then every, I guess this is kind of plotting, I guess. Uh, and then like mm -hmm. I'll be like, okay, well, Willow, like like what I did with Willow's crush is like, okay, I need to do this or that or whatever, and um, so I'll just type it in my notepad to go back and look at it and be like, okay, now I remember what I need to do. Type it in. Um, so that's like a little bit of plotting, but for the most part, I literally just will go back read what I've written and add another chapter or two or three or whatever until I'm, you know, like, okay, I'm, 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 I'm done now. I need to take a break. Um, but yeah, so I, I really don't No, I don't, I don't have like sticky notes everywhere with plotting and, <laughs> yeah, maps and all that. I don't. I see, I see, yeah. I see writers that I know have sticky notes all over the walls and all over the, yeah. the monitor is my, I, for me, I, I I I do a simple outline. I do something like a simple outline on Word, and then but then I just add stuff to it. But I'm, I'm always adding stuff to it. So the so the out so the, the outline I have goes from this to all the way to this. You know, I, I, mm -hmm. or, 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 or I just end up changing something because I just I just don't enjoy it. Yeah. So, oh, and we got a uh, we got the Daniel. Uh, from our friend from Argentina. Thank you for watching. Hey, yeah. Hey, buddy. How you doing? That's uh, that's Chris Philbrook's uh, white hand man. He he, he, does, he takes care of uh, popping off to Chris Philbrook. So thank you for watching, my man. I uh, hope everything is good out there in Argentina. So uh, any more any more questions you want to ask, out Doc, to uh, Stephanie? Anything you could think of? Wait, what? No, no, I was asking, uh, I was asking Doc if she had any more questions to ask you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna yeah. say, what do you, what are your next books going to look like? Um, Where's your mind the, going today? Do what? Where's your mind going today? What direction are you moving in? Um, like I've said, I want to, I want to, um, 
finish up the current one that I'm writing, but I am having like some ideas that I want to go ahead and start on because I don't want to lose them, you know, mm -hmm. um, but they're the ones that I have planned are thrillers. Um, not too sure what the route is, if it's going to be psychological or, um, or what my current work in progress is a psychological thriller. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Like I said, I want to finish that one, but, um, I also want to start working on some others that I have in, in my notepad in my phone that I've kind of started like the beginning or not the beginning. Well, yeah, kind kind of, I guess like a few sentences of the beginning and then like some ideas, you know, so. Well, you know, like they're, Emmett, all, they're all thrillers. They're all thrillers. Okay. I was going to say Emmett Smith, the Dallas Cowboy superstar. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Used to say, and, and he was taught this by his coach, um, who was actually a good mate of mine at um, his high school, that mm. it's just an idea to you write it down. And once you write it down, it becomes a goal. So you've just got heaps of goals out there. Yeah. Like that. Do you, how many That's books do you write on on the same time? Do you work on multiple, multiple books? Ah, good or question. Do you work all the way through one and, and then switch to another or what do you do? I need to, I, I'm actually about to be doing that because it is kind of ridiculous to have like the ideas in my phone and not start them when I can just go back and forth. There's, there's not a rule that says that I can't, you know? There so isn't. No, no. I mean, not unless you've got to trace characters all the way through a series or something like that. Cause that's when it gets confusing. Wow. Yeah. Right. As, long, as long as, long as your brain can handle it, there's no rule that you can have to write one book at a time. As long, as long, I, I, and actually I think you'd be better for it because that, because you have two books coming up, you have two books done instead of just one. You know, it's, it's actually more volume. I I, yeah. I I can only do one book at a time, but that's me. That's just, that's I tried doing two books at the same time. It just doesn't work for me. But mm -hmm. that's just me. That's just me personally. Uh, maybe with you, it'll be it'll be it'll be gold. It'll be it'll be your golden ticket. I'm gonna try because I've always okay. just kind of limited myself to one book at a time, and then have been like, okay, well, I'll just work on this other one once I'm finished with this one. Um, when that's not really me trying it, that's just me limiting myself. And so I need to actually try that. And I think I'm going to try that today. Cool. Oh, oh we, we got a My good question yeah. uh, from one of our viewers. We have a question. Uh, when, when you start writing down an idea, do you already know where and how to end it? It's a good question. That's a good one. Um, yeah, it is, I think. Uh, so the, I have, three ideas in my head that no, I don't know what the ending is going to, or not my head uh, that are on my phone that I don't know what the ending will be or anything like that, but I haven't really played them out around with it too much. Um, with Willow's flame and with Willow's crush, I did know what the ending would be like before it came even close to the ending. Um, because, I wanted with both, both books have the name is um, a play on what happens in the book as well. And it's kind of it, 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 like at the beginning, people are like, oh, okay, it's kind of, okay, Willow's Flame, Willow's Crush, I see kind of why it's called that. You don't really know for sure until it gets to the end. And then you're like, oh, shit. Okay, now I see why it's like that. That's, that's kind of crazy. I wasn't expecting that. So I like to have the title of the books um matching what happens um and do like a play on it like so like it could be it can mean two different things um and the the second thing that it means is least expected and so like with willow's crush i've had that name forever um mm -hmm. and ended up coming up with the ending and even like i said i even changed the ending but it still goes along with it um and i mean i just made it yeah. Anyway, so 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 yeah, kind of. I do sometimes. All right. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, 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 damn it. The hour is almost over, so I got one more question I wanted to ask you, 
and it's a good one. Uh, so do you have characters based on your real life? Do you write people based on your real life into your books? <laughs> yeah. I actually That's a really good question. Um, mm -hmm. I like that question and uh -huh. I would uh yes. Yeah, they they re uh, yeah uh yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, this, I, I just I just make them a little bit more extra in in the books. Uh -huh. Um but yeah, mm -hmm. they they are based off of I mean, the characters in general, like the kind of like the way that they are. So their characteristics um, remind me of people that I've met in my real life. Yes. At one point or another. Yes. All right. Yeah. So, 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 so you try to do the best you can to avoid uh, putting too much, too many real life things about them. You know, do you try right, the best? Yeah, yeah. I don't give them real names. Like, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, like, um, I'll just stick with like a safe one. So like Pauline, um, she's the nosy right. neighbor. Yeah. Yes. I know somebody who's, you know, older and pops a lot of pills and kind of like the way that they kind of act kind of like crossing boundaries and stuff reminds me of somebody that I know, you know, but maybe I'll make them, I'll obviously make them look completely different than that person and give them other characteristics that are mm -hmm. of somebody else that I know. So it's kind of like a mix, you know, one person could be five people I know. Can they okay. identify themselves in the book? Do what? Can they identify themselves in the book? <laughs> or do, you, do, you, do you change them enough so yep. that they really mm -hmm. don't realize it's them? I change them enough so that people don't realize, um, right. at least I don't think so, but. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got, we got one more question for you. Not for me. It's from a, a viewer. Preferred beverage while writing. What do you like to drink <laughs> while you write? Oh, that's funny. That's a funny question. Um, mm -hmm. hmm. not, with it, not with this it's, group. Trust me. <laughs> um, it's, it's different sometimes, but um, I mean, I like to go Honestly, I like to go like grab a beverage from like a little coffee shop down the road from my house. And, you know, that can be different. It could be like um, something that I like is, um, oh my God, what's called lavender, lavender. Um, something I like to, to drink sometimes while I'm writing the more non-boring answer would be lavender uh, coffee or iced coffee or whatever um i don't really i i don't i don't really drink alcohol while i'm writing um yeah but me I, I like, yeah i just you know so yeah but i'm yeah, not much of a drinker yeah like no not, not really good for the career of juices although for some people it works yeah i was gonna say some people were sitting on this air and you can tell that i'm the only sober person here you know, it's like, okay, this was an interesting conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like to I have a I like to have a few shots of espresso while I'm writing. That way it like really helps me to kind of it's just get really yeah. into it. Yeah. Yeah. Caffeine. Yeah, hard to step away. Mm -hmm. All right. So Ah, wow, Stephanie, wow, the time sure flies. We are almost at the hour. So uh, how I might to end these shows, uh, and before I end the show, uh, Stephanie, thank you for coming on the show with us. You've been a wonderful guest. You know, I will be looking at your books. I will be uh, messaging you those links uh, in a little bit. But how I might to end these shows with Jack is that I might to ask you, where can people, where can everybody find you? So uh, Stephanie, where can everybody uh, find you? Um, Facebook yourself out. is, yeah, Facebook, um, I'm on there just as my name, Stephanie Fields, and then there's also Stephanie Fields author, uh, um, and then I am also on TikTok as Stephanie Fields author, so it's really easy to find me. Oh, yeah, yeah, I found you pretty easy on Facebook, so yeah, yeah. look for me. I found you too. You got my yeah, I thought, but I didn't accept it yet because I didn't want it to just yeah. go away. 
I understand. That's fine. But, you know, when you get a chance. <laughs> yeah. yeah big part. All right. Uh, well, one more thing. Uh, one of my viewers said, no anal leakage. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of an inside joke. Uh, you see, we got another we got another co-host, Dungeon Dan Ubell, and I kind of teased him about anal needing because because he brought up on the podcast I'm already doing my post on my fan group, and yeah, you know, I, I I do another I do a Roman history podcast. It's on hiatus right now, and he just likes to come in and joke around. So I kind of gave him the title of anal needing professor because he wanted to mess with me. So. <laughs> Just, I I, I kind of got a little revenge on him. So Dungeon Dan, that's for you, buddy. That was a, a <laughs> homage to uh, Dungeon Dan you bell. Yeah, I wasn't expecting I told, that. I told, you, I, told you, I told you the show gets weird sometimes. You you just caught the timid part of it. But now you're starting to see the, the guts of the weirdness of this group, of these of this podcast, of this glorious, wonderful yeah, we, we, we're definitely going to get you in uh, when we have everybody. We're definitely going to have to get you in with everybody. Yeah. Okay. That's going to be really fun. Uh, so, Wendy, uh, for me, where well, you can find me, you can find me on Amazon, Facebook. Uh, you can find me on uh, The Written Undead. You can find me here every Saturday doing this podcast with, uh, with our wonderful guests that come over. And I still got a couple of copies of these. So if you want them signed, it's trying to dollars each. So if you want them, I have them signed. So that's about it for me. So uh, Stephanie, thank you for coming on over. You've been a wonderful guest. And uh, Doc, come, thanks for coming on in, uh, for being my co-host today. My pleasure. Uh, you know I yeah. love coming on. Yeah, uh, we, we hope to see more of you in a future podcast. And Stephanie, we're definitely going to get you on a future show. Uh, I mean, we'll, 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 we'll pack to next year. We got not, a whole lot of guests. So I'm going to have to, so, you know, but, but, but we're going to get you on in the future show. Okay. How many viewers are on today? How uh, many viewers? Uh, we got about, uh, we had about three, four viewers. Oh, so, okay. Watch it as a well, podcast. It's viewed afterwards. Oh, okay. Well, I yeah, would yeah, like to yeah, say yeah. that I, huh? What was that? Oh, I, I was going to say, I would like to say that I have some copies of Willow's Flame um, to sign as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you sure. Up to the face. Yeah, Look, sure. Face. Yeah. Um, and then I'll have yeah. copies of Willow's Crush soon. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, so this, we have reached the end of the Book of Sign and Podcast. I know Jack wasn't here, but this is for you, Jack. Uh, I hope I did you well. And this is for 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 Doc Fried. I'm Angel Ramon. That's Stephanie Fields. And we are out, guys. Thank you for watching. And if you and if you missed it, you can watch the replay when this is all done. Okay. Thank you very right, much. You. you have you have a wonderful day, guys. Bye bye.